Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. So we're now um, into August, so time to look back at what's been happening uh, in terms of the top five uh, blockchain games and their daily active unique wallet count um, over the last seven months now. Um, so here we have um, our dots. So each dot represents a day uh, and each uh, on the vertical scale, each dot is positioned in terms of the daily active unique wallets that these blockchains, five blockchain games, um, how what they've attracted um, on each day. So we take the top top five, um, which is a kind of a broad measure of, of kind of what um, has been happening over the past year. So there's obviously a lot more other blockchain games, a lot of other blockchain games out there. Um, but there's a lot kind of around the kind of 500 to 1000 uh, range, which kind of go up and down and come and go. So I basically kind of focus on what I've called the top five, which is the kind of the highest profile ones and the ones that I think are most interesting. So we start the year 1st of January, as, as years tend to start. Um, and we have actually quite a lot of these games. Um, uh, so actually really four of these top five uh, when we start the year off. They're all roughly about the same, actually, kind of about three and a half thousand. Um, as the year goes on, we see, um, you know, these kind of what we could have seen thought of as maybe kind of little news stories or events now kind of are becoming kind of broad trends that we are seeing. So top line, we have Splinterlands, the card game that was running on Steam, the Steam blockchain until the 1st of June. Then it moved to Hive, which is the um, which is a hard fork of the Steam blockchain. And we can just see here that really since um, since that uh Forking, which happened about here, the um, uh, Splintlands has just kind of powered ahead. Really, I mean, it's, it's really had, it's really always been increasing. So we can see in blue here, it's, it's always been on the up, but it, I think it's the acceleration has happened since it uh, did the hard fork. Uh, I think that's partly because it got, it started to get a lot more um, publicity, really, and also I think there was some reengagement of people who had stopped playing. Um, so, so we've got kind of two effects going on here. Um, the other interesting thing to point to point out with Splinterlands is we see these kind of these regular kind of um, peaks that are much higher than the daily average, and this happens because um, every two weeks, um, I think it's every two weeks, but that kind of period of time, there is a kind of countdown. So, so whenever you are playing Splinterlands uh, and you're playing ranked games, so you're playing against other people and and um, for kind of prizes. Um, you're playing basically in a in an event system. Uh, you're, you're you're positioned on the on a leaderboard, and um, the higher you get up on the on the leaderboard of all the players, then the more rewards you get. So what you tend to see is when these countdowns happen. So you got you know start off, you got uh, you know twelve days left, left eight days left, seven days left, six days, and then suddenly go to two days left, and everyone's frantically playing to get high up the leaderboard. So this is why we're seeing these these kind of particular peaks, and you can see it's very characteristic of Splinterlands. Maybe something else for other blockchain games to think about. Splinterlands has really done a good job here. And obviously, uh, I would imagine uh, when we have these peaks, we have uh, probably high monetization as well and, and, and the people um, playing more sessions and, and more time spent in this game. So it's not just the daily activity going up. There's a whole lot of activity that's been driven um, on Splinterlands by these events. And we can see after the event, after the, after the leaderboards reset, kind of drops down again. So anyway, Splinterlands is doing really well. I would recommend you play that if you haven't played it already. Um, what else we got, got going on? So we had this other game, Crypto Dynasty, it used to be called EOS Dynasty, um, now called Crypto Dynasty because it's running on the Ethereum blockchain. It's a mobile game out of China, um, uh, kind of a, like an idle type game. And uh, for the quite a long time, it was uh, you know it was fighting out with Splinterlands um, to be the top blockchain game in terms of daily active unique wallets. And for you know for a couple of months, really, uh, what are we here? We're kind of uh, late late uh, March, April, and uh, May. And then when uh, Splinterlands does its transition to, to Hive, it, it zooms away. Um, but equally, we can now see um, that Crypto Dynasty and uh, and the two means we're adding the, the uh, daily active unique wallets from both the Ethereum and the EOS version together. Um, pretty pretty sharp decline happening here. So we're from 4,000 you know, down to 3,000 in, in, um, in a month. So that's pretty um, significant. Interesting to see how that goes. Obviously, one of the problems for Crypto Dynasty is it's added support for Ethereum at a time when Ethereum is totally balked by gas prices, high gas fees. That that is not looking like it's going to change anytime soon. So if they were hoping they were going to re really kind of gain a new audience from Ethereum players, um, that's just not not going to happen now. 
So, um, you know, I guess this decline will kind of uh, find a plateau, um, but quite where that level is going to be, uh, hard, to, hard to tell. Um, prospectors, again, this is, um, we're measuring two games together here, or two versions of the game. So there's one running on the WAX blockchain, which is currently the bigger, and one running on the EOS blockchain. Um, again, start of the year, it's doing pretty well. Um, it's kind of declined. Um, so at this point here in uh, April, early April, under, under 3,000. It's kind of picked up a little bit, um, pretty steady. Um, so not really a lot going on there, but, it, but it's kind of maintaining its kind of third position or maybe second position if, if Crypto Dynasty goes underneath. Uh, then we have in green, we have Upland, a uh, mobile game running on the uh, EOS blockchain. Um, and pretty steady. It's, it's still in kind of fairly early stages of beta, um, uh, but uh, it's kind of peaked at about 2,300 daily active unique wallets here. It's gone, dropped, dropped off a little bit in the last couple of weeks. And then we have kind of uh, My Crypto Heroes in orange, the kind of the, uh, at one point, the, the most popular blockchain game kind of at the end of 2019, running on Ethereum, uh, kind of maintains, it's kind of always, it's dropping away even even before the gas price kind of kills it, but it's running here from about 3,500 at the start of the year. Now it's about 400, 500 daily active unique wallets. So, so really, um, uh, take it apart really it's, it's uh, popularity by the, this this high gas fee and really now the only people playing it are the real kind of hardcore um, bands and actually what we're seeing here really actually is here we're seeing people paying one tenth of an ETH to get um, daily login uh, rewards um, and basically you know, you, you, that's such a small um, value transaction that no one's paying the gas fees for it now so now what we're reduced to here what we're seeing here this is the people trading um, characters within the game so we've basically removed all this activity. Um, so people are still playing it because you can play it offline um, or not play it off chain, sure, I should say. Um, but the, the on-chain activity is people uh, buying characters and trading characters. So that's still what we're seeing with this 400, 500 daily extra unique wallets. Um, you can see all that all over again. So this is uh, the 30 day trailing average. So this is where we take um, each one of those uh, dots um, and, we, and we add back, we, we basically average over the previous, this dot, we average over the previous 29 days and then we then we get a much smoother uh, curve because obviously uh, blockchain on-chain activity tends to be a bit um, uh, punctuated up and down so um, you can see here the splinterlands uh, crypto dynasty going down prospectors kind of sitting um, happy about 3000 the rise of upland seems to have kind of plateaued off a little bit so it's got over 2000 and then it's it's, it's not really um, looking like it's going going to head upwards anytime soon but obviously these things can change and then my, my crypto hero is this big decline one thing worth also pointing out in july so we don't normally look at axie infinity um pretty popular game uh, or pretty well um i shouldn't say popular pretty highly regarded game running on the ethereum blockchain um but we can see here in red we've got the daily actives unique uh, account and then in blue we have the 30-day average so it's the same um, data just put onto one graph for Axie Infinity. And um, this is actually a log, um, a log chart. So we can see here that um, uh, that uh, the, these, this is 50, this is 100, so that's doubled. Um, and then th this is kind of, you know, um, every time you move up one, you're kind of doubling sort of thing. Um, so it's a log chart, uh, which I've used in this case, because um, we can see um, that the daily rate was over here, kind of about 100 and 200, maybe 250. Um, and then it starts dropping down, goes under 100 for certain days, it tends to you know bubble around a little bit. And we can see here that the 30 day at trailing average is, is down to about 100. This is the start of uh, July. Then we have this massive um, peak. So we're going here from about 100 up to about 1000. So so a massive rise in, in a couple of days. Um, and then so this is kind of like a, a peak and then falls away again over the next week. Um, and this happens because the they have a uh, they have an ERC twenty token, the small love potion, which you get um, if you battle and you need to breed your Axie Infinities. So it has a has a utility in the game. And some people just decided they were gonna they were gonna do a um, speculative bubble around the token. So people started buying the token, raising the price massively, selling it off to newcomers, um, and taking their profits. And then obviously the price um, actually went up um, enormous an enormous amount. And then basically um, came back down again because no one else was, was buying it. Um, but what's interesting, and we haven't, we don't, it's a bit hard to tell yet because we haven't got enough data, as we always say, um, but we have this big peak of daily active unique wallets 
um, and then it kind of drops down again. So we still have even some days now in early uh, August. We've got a couple of days or late July. Um, uh, still around uh, 100, 100 daily electric unique wallets, which is what we see here. Obviously, this is still happening with high gas prices. So it's expensive to do on-chain transactions. So that's the same for Axie Infinity. But we still have these other days where it's up. Um, it's kind of bobbling around. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's either 100 or several hundred. Um, so we'll have to see how this 30-day average kind of pans out still high because of this, this big peak here. So just something to make note of. There are still these kind of quirks going on. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, I guess, how much of this activity Axie Infinity actually manages to capture in the long run but anyway thanks for watching um this is blockchain gaming world where we spend our time looking at uh, blockchain games and trying to make sense of them and looking at the data and playing them and all that sort of stuff so if you're into blockchain games um, it's a fascinating sector um so i hope the videos are useful and interesting but please do subscribe thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon